Moment, das klingt wirklich jetzt ein bisschen weinerlich. Vielleicht bin ich so rübergekommen, tut mir leid. Also wie gesagt, konkurrenzbeliebtes Geschäft finde ich wunderbar. Ja. Was ich nicht gut finde und was ich nicht gut fürs Land finde, wenn wir einen dominierenden Medienanbieter in einer Welt haben und die ARD und die ZDF, die öffentlich-rechtlichen Anstalten, haben die Mittel innerhalb von kürzester Zeit, das Netz zu dominieren, wenn man ihnen freien Lauf geben würde. Was die Qualität an, angeht, haben wir, äh, brauche ich jetzt die Skandale der letzten Jahre nicht aufzuzählen. Ja? Ähm, also da wird die Qualität garantiert nicht, die Maßstäbe werden nicht im öffentlich-rechtlichen gesetzt. Aber wie, pardon, wie kann man denn das Netz dominieren? Das Netz hat doch keine Frequenzen. Also es ist doch immer eine User-Entscheidung, gehe ich auf die ARD und ZDF-Seite oder nicht. Das ist doch, also Jetzt. Im Web ist natürlich schon die Frage, der, trotz der Online-Booms, ist schon die Frage der Finanzierbarkeit, der Qualität. Die steht tagtäglich bei jedem von uns auf der, auf der Agenda. Und wenn du plötzlich, sag ich mal, einen Kanal hast, der heißt, sag ich mal, Zwangsgebührenfinanzierung, sag ich mal, hilft da dabei, dann muss man Herrn von Blumenkron als Marktführer schon verstehen, dass er sagt, hier wird mit ungleichen äh, 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 Waffen gekämpft. Und, und das ist das Stichwort, sag ich mal, wie wird der Wettbewerb äh, eigentlich finanziert? Das heißt, es müsste eventuell Finanzierungsgrenzen geben. Also die Grenzen seien nicht vielleicht im Format oder im Inhalt, sondern das ist eine finanziell. Das Entscheidung. Wer, wer entscheidet eigentlich, wie viel man da reingeben darf? Ja? Nick Ren? I, I, I would just like to add that I don't think that the fact that there's not a level playing field is nothing new. There's never been a level playing field in media. Some people have more money than others. Some people are state finance. Some are advertised. Some people have uh, benefactors who have bottomless pockets. Other people need to make strict commercial returns every year. I think you know we just need to um, adapt to what we have and, and, and be true to our product. And, uh, but I think in, in the case of the web, it's extremely hard to dominate the web. The web is so huge, it's not constrained. Um, and, 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 and I think that if you focus on what you're doing and get what you're doing right, um, we can worry too much about what other people are doing. It is nonetheless very much a financial issue. Some people, some even Web 2.0 optimists say that we're in a second phase now of massive consolidation and commercialization. Simon Waldman, you mentioned that briefly when you talked about Google's role. Are you worried about what that could mean for content and access? Um, if I take a very, a very, very UK-centric vote, which is, which is actually tied to this debate, which has so many echoes to the way we talk about the BBC, it's uncanny. And don't think that everyone is blissfully happy about what, what happens to the BBC. But if I take a, a broad view of the way the Internet's going and where investment in content is, uh, my, my great fear is that content has always been funded by advertising and now about 70 to 80 percent of the UK's online advertising market is actually going into US businesses, AOL, MSN, Google, Yahoo, the majority of whom are not domestic, investing in domestic content creation. Um, and the only people who are, and then the people who are doing it is the BBC, who are state funded to the tune of many tens of millions, which none of us can compete with. And so you sit there, and also there is no imperative around the BBC actually to make money. So the idea that we are breeding a commercially aware new creative sector within the British economy is something I sort of have a lot of concerns about. Because every penny that goes into Google goes straight back. To, to Silicon Valley, you know, everybody that goes into Yahoo, MSN, actually their, their sort of, you know, their, their, their commitment to creating content in the UK is marginal. And I think that's structurally is, is quite worrying. And when you think about how much as a country we've obsessed about ownership in radio or in other media, it, it's, it's remarkable what's happened so quickly. And the flip side, as Nick says, is, you know, there is a certain get over it professor sort of moment of that, which is, it's just the way it is. But I think there is, a, there is something that's quite dramatic change around ownership uh, that is unlike anything that happened before. I mean, CNN is a US organization, but employs hundreds of journalists in the UK because it's the only way you can operate. But when Google, Yahoo, MSN go, the way digital businesses work, actually they have almost comparatively skeletal staffs in, 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 um, all around Europe, I think, is, is exactly the same.